How did you feel when you first heard that Fred the Godson tested positive for COVID-19? Concert Crew Podcast, we back again. Yes. Hey, yo. Yes, we uh, are. This is one of those episodes, uh, man, you hate that we got to do it, but culturally, man, we got to do this one for the culture, man. Um, Frederick Thomas, uh, known in the hip-hop community as Fred the Godson, uh, so passed away at the age of 35 from complications um, from COVID-19. Um, he first revealed, Fred the Godson first revealed that he was uh, battling um, the coronavirus uh, earlier um, in April, April 6th. He uh, he put a message out on Instagram. He said, I'm here with this COVID-19 shit. Yep. Please keep me in y'all prayers. He had the yep. ventilator on, um, and he hashtag God is great. That's when he first let the world know um, he was there. Uh, what was going on. Fred's wife, um, Leanne um, Jemot. She told Double XL magazine that Fred the Godson had made some progress while being hospitalized. Um, mm-hmm. he, she said he um, he went in the hospital because he was having trouble breathing, and he tested positive for the COVID nineteen. They put him on a ventilator, and doctors told his wife he was going to make it. Um, or she told him that he wasn't going to make it um, because his lungs weren't working. Um, he he was fighting though, and be, and because he went from one hundred percent support from the ventilator to only 40% of support from the ventilator. So he was actually showing progress. Unfortunately, too much damage has already had already been done, and plus he already had bad asthma problems as well. Yeah, he was in the hospital uh, at one point, and I seen it on the ground, where he was in the hospital for a minute behind asthma. Yeah. So um, Fred the uh, Godson passed away on April 23rd and left behind his wife and two young daughters. Um, how did you feel when you first heard that Fred the Godson tested positive for COVID nineteen? I, I was I was scared just because I knew about like me following him on a gram. I already knew that he had bad asthma, right. and then you know being in New York, it just like everybody had that shit, man. Right. Then you know you in these hospitals and they they overcrowded. <clears throat> bad enough, New York City on itself was on top of each other. Yeah. So just you know in the hospital, I just knew. I mean, in his weight, like I was I was yeah. nervous for him, man. Yeah, cause I, cause I like you. I didn't know about the asthma, asthma problems, but I did know about uh, well from visual. You know the weight problem. You know they say that always plays a part. And if you know anybody that's in high in weight, that yeah, respiratory, would, yeah. respiratory, any type of respiratory infections, any of that is at risk. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of crazy, but I didn't think that it would get that bad. Yeah, I was concerned, man, because I knew about the asthma. Um, and the coronavirus, the coronavirus is really not good when you got those like those pre-existing breathing conditions like that. Um, so I guess they was keeping this condition a secret because I kind of felt like I didn't hear anything, so that was a good thing because they was kind of keeping it under wraps. So I was like, okay, I'm not hearing nothing, so yeah. that's encouraging. I'm like, he must be doing all right, but obviously that. But it was a time within there that all the rappers, a lot of the rappers, started posting pictures of him. So I'm like, are they just posting this generally because they just thinking about them, or are they posting it because they know that it's it, it, it's, it's rough, yeah. it, it, it's looking bad for them? Because before he passed away, like a two weeks before that, a bunch of rappers just started posting uh, Fred the Godson. So I feel like some people in their circles was letting them know like it's not looking good. Right? Yeah. And then I seen the, um, the interview on live, um, which was really a re- a really good back and forth between Jim Jones and Fat Joe. Right. And they was talking about it. In fact, Joe was saying that he had um, some people that was in the hospital that, I guess, doctors or whatever the case may be, that was um, working with Fred the Godson. And he getting that's who he was getting his information from, besides his wife. So, um, so once I seen that, I just thought, all right, well, maybe he's doing a little better, right? For due to what Joe was saying, because Joe didn't say like, yo, it don't look good, this and that. He just was like, he's going to pull through, boom, boom. But it just it just kind of struck. Hit different when they, you know, when they said that. Yeah. So how about the news when it broke that he passed away? The same day, and this is no bull crap. I'm on my way to work. The same day, I, you know, you hear the news, you know, because I listen to 105.3 when I'm on my way to work, and you hear the news in between, and then that's when they said something about the ventil- the ventilators in New York City, and the first thing I thought about was him. And that's real rap and, because I'm like, yo, <clears throat> damn, I know he on a ventilator. That's not good news. You know what I'm saying? And I promise you, this same exact day, 
I'm riding to work. That's when the the statement, the worldwide statement about NYC, um, everybody that was on ventilations, well, on the ventilator in New York, they didn't make it. Well, well, well what, what it said because we was talk on a group chat. We yeah. said the same thing. Yeah. So I seen, I didn't hear it. I was on, I was at work on the net, and it said eighty percent of. New Yorkers who get on a, a new uh, people from New York City, eighty percent of them that get on a ventilator die, eighty yeah. percent, and that's like damn dog. And I thought about him, and I used to go periodically go to his gram, see if another picture was uploaded, or see if his thing light up, like he posted right, a story, right, right, right. and nothing. I was like, man, fuck, man. But it was just quiet, so I was like, maybe no, like you said, no news is good news, but. Oh, yeah. Like when I read that shit, that the day, day I seen, I said it's some bullshit, man. Yeah, man, I was this this joint. I was like, damn, man, that joint hurt, and it was crazy because I felt like I felt like we was just with him at the Benny concert back in the end of uh, last year. I feel like that was not too long ago, man. Yeah, it wasn't, and he was just. He was just healthy. He was he was yeah, he was, he was very he put, he approachable. Left some too. Yeah, he was very yeah, he, approachable. He, he was very weight. down to earth. Like he knew who he was. Like yo, I appreciate y'all support. Yeah. I mentioned coming on the podcast. And now, he and, was like, yo, and, I'm with it. And I was gonna and I was gonna play the evil guy on this because you know everybody that listens to our podcast or everybody that watches this, you know they probably like, oh man, they trying to get they they just trying to touch on everything. What was our reason to doing the Fred Godson? I'm just being the evil genius on this one. What was our reason doing the um, Fred Godson um, interview right now? Oh, this uh, this, this episode right yes, now. This episode because we felt like he didn't get honored enough, and we honored him, and we wanted we wanted to tell people like, yo, this dude was he was nice. How long have we been talking about Fred the Godson and his project? Since 2017. That's a fact. It's on a the fact. record. On, on the for record. Rap. Have Fred the Godson. Responded to anything that we've done to him. Absolutely, on a couple occasions. I, I, the crazy part is, like, he was so approachable. I um, the 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 reverse uh, Bo Jackson's, the orange and blue joints. He had the rever- the first person I ever seen with the reverse shits on. I, I hit him a DM like, damn, what they custom? He's like, nah, they in the stores now. Go get them. I was like, damn, no. And I went and found them fucking Bo Jackson's. It was the uh, orange and blue joints. Is, but he said this on DM. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's what's up. He always responded to everything we've done. This is before I'm part of the podcast, though. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Same birthday as me, too. Yep. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh, that's, that, 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 that's a great look. Wow. But I when we was crazy. backstage with him, Taz, this is no bull crap. And you can ask anybody that was there or if, if you, they seen us talking to him. This dude was showing us love like he actually, like, we seen him. Like, we know that he's seen us from what we tagged him in as, as far as on that. But the love that he was showing was like we be around him a lot. Yeah, and nah, he, like, he actually like started smiling, like smiling, he like, like, like when I mean, he seen us. Yeah, shout like out, him. shout out to Steve, man, shout out yes, to Steve. But, uh, but him and Thirty Eight Specs, they were showing special. their love. As they seen us, it was like they knew us, and they were Word. showing us love from the rip. And he he like I hear everybody talk about it, but now I can actually say I experienced it. Like he was just a super cool dude, down to earth, humble. Yes, like just approachable. Like, he was just chilling, man. But he seemed like he was in good health. Like, everything is fine. It seemed like this was just yesterday, man. So, yep. it was like, man, it's tough, man. If I'm mistaken, yo, I think I, I think he gave, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I may be wrong, though. I think he gave Jules the phone to take a picture of him and Conway when we was backstage. Because Jules was right there and. Whoever he had with him wasn't around, and Jules seen that he was trying to take a picture. He looked dolo to me. Him. He looked like he was yeah. too dolo. I think that he night. gave Jules the camera for Jules to take a picture of him and Conway. He may because him and Conway was talking for a minute. He may have. Well, Fred the Godson was from. He was from the Bronx in the early two thousands. He was part of a two man duo called TBN. Um, DJ Clark Kent, who was a music executive. Um, and just DJ, producer, all of the above. He took interest in signing him, and he didn't actually end up signing them, but they worked together a lot. Um, Fred the Godson started to shine out. He started to be the one of the, of the two-man duo to shine the most, and he eventually went solo. He also did a group project titled FDNY with some other artists. After that, he started really taking like the solo thing real serious um, and took it up another notch. He was inspired by artists like Biggie, uh, Big Pun, Jadakiss, and Jay Z, among others. Um, Fred the Godson took his buzz up a notch in 2010 with his mixtape Armageddon. The buzz from that tape earned Fred a spot in the 2011 Double XL freshman class alongside Kendrick Lamar, Meek Mill, Mac Miller, and YG. Um, he was not able to convert that early like career momentum into a major label deal. 
where Freddie Godson was a fixture in New York hip hop radio, making frequent appearances on Sway, um, on uh, Funk, uh, Funk Master Flex's Hot 97 show, which he killed every time. Killed it every time. My boy said, I'm a king of New York, Christopher walking in me. Both Biggie and Pun, both Christopher's walking in me. <laughs> that nigga killed that funk flex shit. Although Fred slowed down on making uh, on putting out music in the mid um, in the middle of last decade, he picked back up around 2019. His final mixtape, Payback, which we reviewed on here, was released March 20th. Mm. What did Jay say? <laughs> and, and, um, and and was his fourth project since the beginning of 2019. So uh, when did y'all first hear Fred the God some rap? I ain't gonna lie. 2011. I love you, uh, Jada Kiss mixtape. Uh, yeah. Toast to that. Yep, that's the first time I heard Fred on yep. that joint, and he killed that joint. Him and Kiss. Yep, and uh, that's the first time I heard of Fred. And I think maybe, maybe Archie may have brought him to my attention on a mixtape or, or or something he heard first. But the first time I heard him was on that Jada Kiss. Joint. I, I agree with you. The same thing. I, I think I might. I, I think I heard his name before, but the first time I actually heard bars yeah, from him bars was on, on that, that was on that Jada Kiss mixtape yeah. for sure. And that, One that of my was, favorite songs on the mixtape. That was like t- that was like 2011. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the first time I heard I heard him. I didn't hear the mixtape before that that he did, but I, I remember hearing his name though. But that's actually first time I actually heard him rap. That was the yeah. um thank the thank you um no it's called I love you. Now I'm talking about the um the, the that Jada mixtape. It's called I Love You. I Love You, yeah, I yeah, Love You mixtape. Yeah, yep, that's yeah, the first time I heard him. Um, how would y'all, like, describe Fred the Godson's style as an MC? Witty. Super witty. Witty. Um, just, like, creep up on you bars, but, like, damaging. Punchlines and metaphors. That, yeah. That, was a, that, like, I thought it was a perfect, and, I and you know, from here now, I was like, oh, this is, he must be new on D-Block. Like that's that's <laughs> that that's that Jada Fab punchline mm-hmm. metaphor mm-hmm. type rap, man. He had that man. It's crazy because he had like a a slow. It was almost unorthodox to me. It was like he was a slow delivery, but the metaphors and punchlines. It was like a. It was like you 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 heard the whole build up. You knew it was coming, yeah. but he would like slowly like Give bring it you in, bring it yeah. to you in the rhyme, so you could hear all his. So it's easy to recite his lyrics because it's it's slow. So you, you, it's easy to remember his lyrics, yeah. but he like he he's like just works it all the way in. Like it's it, he he's super witty, man. Yes, punchlines and metaphors is just he's dope, crazy, he's dope. crazy with it. Um, when did you feel like Fred the Godson had like like he was special as far as lyric t- lyrical talent? Uh, that's that's hard, man. Because like hearing him from from 2011, then you know you hear him on features or something like that. Like he he's always he's been consistent in his yes. No, I mean it's like one of them Jada things. Like, damn, is he had a whack verse? Like, like the the nigga, he always gonna catch you with some shit. Like, damn, this nigga, you hear what this nigga said? It's always something that he always got quotables, always. Yeah. And he, you know, the leading up to the shit with him and um, him and uh, uh what's my man name? Um, Joel J- Yeah, Joel T's. Yeah. Then the joint he had after that, the uh, the, the one with the red gor- gorilla girl. What was the one after that? God level. Yeah, God, God level. level. Like, like, dope. like this nigga was like. He was dope, man. Did you hear him on Jim Jones' album? You hear him on like different people's he, shit. He had some great features. Mm. Uh, For me, Gordo. I agree with I you. Think, I think I think Gordo, man. I think Gordo was beyond like one of his best projects. And I think I gave it four or four and a half headphones. But I just think that the the lyrical talent he displayed on that album, man, and his style, his his, his witty loop flow, and his as you said, Tess, his punchlines. It was just so serious, man, at that time. I had so many quotables at that time that he said on the album, I wasn't doing my quotable thing like I do now, but <laughs> that joint was crazy. And it was it was it was beyond I think his best project, man, and his introduc his real, real introduction of me really liking him. Yeah, I agree. Um I two I say two thousand seventeen when Gordo came out. Mm-hmm. Um I already knew he could rap and he he, he had bars. But the way that project sounded, I mean, yeah. shout out to Heat Makers that did a lot of the beats on there. But when I heard that, I'm like, oh, yo, he really got something. Yeah. He, ain't, he ain't just a good rapper. Like, he can make songs. Like, I was feeling that joint. Gordo, to me, is my favorite project from him, and he killed that. When I heard Gordo, I'm like, oh, he really – it yeah. gave me a whole nice. different ear to him at that point after that. Yeah. After Gordo, I was a whole different ear to him, man. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like yo, he's a problem right now. Like, boy said big – 
He said, Big Chain get you smoked like I love Lucy. Just me and my Cuban. I love Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. Uh, looking back, man, Fred the Godson, like you said, he never really af- officially released any albums. So 2010, he released the mixtape Armageddon. That kind of like got his, his name out there buzzing. Actually got him the double XL um, cover, the 2011. He had Busta Rhymes on there. Um, then in 2011, he released um, City of God. This was a this was a, um, a gangster grills joint mm-hmm. with DJ Drama, and he had a heavy cosigns on here. Yes, he, he did. He had Puff on here. He had Pusha T on here. Raekwon on here. Like he had um, Mano. Like the Mad Rapper was on here. And this this was a dope joint. He had a lot of coat. Meek was even on here. Um, Corey Guns. So this was a heavy for gangster grills to back him. 2011. He he had he had a lot of momentum, and I, I thought he was going to really build off of that. But in 2012, he released um, Gordo Federico, um, which was another dope joint um, that he put out. That was 2012. 2013, this might have been a little slept on, but he released a joint called Contraband with um, Heat Makers. It was him and Heat Makers, 2017. That joint was dope. Then he did Fat Boy Fresh mm-hmm. in 2014. Uh, didn't, Go- didn't Hove mention him and Saigon in the same sentence as far as like up and coming? Like rappers, a while ago when they asked him something about that question, I think it was on Angie Martinez. He may have. He was on his radar. Was, he, he was on his he radar. Said, he said, I think he mentioned him um, in Saigon and a couple others, like people he, that was like below the you know, below the radar that was good rappers. He probably did. He probably did. Um, uh, and in um, 2017, like we said, he he uh, he policed uh, Gordo. In 2019, he released uh, God Level, another dope joint. Uh, and in 2000, yeah, in 2020, he released Training Day with Jay Farrell. And then he, in 2020, he released Payback, yeah, um, his last joint. He did a lot of compilation with people like him and another artist would go ahead and do an album. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then yeah. he also did um, Gorilla Glue. And um, I believe that was 2019. He did Gorilla Glue with uh, Joel Ortiz, Heat Makers, and uh, Joel Ortiz, Heat Makers, and, and himself. And himself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what y'all? What was y'all? Um, I, I said, um, I guess me and Freaks already yeah, said Gordo. Gordo. What, what, what y'all think? Your favorite joint that sticks out to y'all? Man, like what you call was so dope, man. Like it was hard, but, but what, I mean, if you would say by itself, the Godson level, or was it? Yeah, God level, God, God, God level. level. That was but, dope. But Gorilla Glue, dog. Gorilla, Gorilla Glue was Gorilla tough. Glue, it it Glue had Glue both of them on there. Because Joe Ortiz ain't no fucking slouch. No, about oh, no absolutely no. not. Hell absolutely. no. <laughs> so the, both of them I on there. I think they like, start recognizing him, too. Yeah. That, that, them punchlines, dog, like, shit. Yeah, no, Gorilla Glue was tough. Peter, you was big on Gorilla Glue. Yeah, I, mean, that I was still like, listen to it. Yeah, that Gorilla Glue was tough. Two MCs, dope beats. They was killing it, man. Uh, Gordo was my favorite this album, but... Um, uh, the Gorilla Glue was tough though. That, yeah. that made that maybe my second. But all his joints, all, the, he he got bars on all of his joints. Like the bars didn't go away on anything. Like the bars is there, for real. Like heavy heavy bars. So, uh, uh, what made Fred the Godson's freestyles stand out compared to others? Mm, just so laid back and so fluent with was, everything they was doing. It was like extra confident. The beats that I guess whatever they he, he was cho- choosing or whatever they they give they gave him, and and he was going for a minute like he wasn't just coming on there and breaking shit up, man or whatever. It, it, it was the, it was the whole the whole thing, especially if you get to see it like the way he moving his hands and he breaking yeah. the shit down and he'll bring it back and so you'll understand so, it like yeah, no this nigga was dope man. <laughs> yeah, ice yeah, in my yeah. crucifix, fat man fly, because <laughs> of the white my. Yeah, my crossfire and like the clan outside. Like what the fuck? <laughs> Yo, I think he um man, he his delivery it, it just it just was something different, man. He he the way he set up because he didn't rap fast, so the way he just yeah. set it up with the beats, it was just real calculated, but it was just like precision. Like Fred the Godson is the kind of rapper that every word counts. Every word counts to the lead up to the metaphor and punchline. So every word is important for him setting up where he's trying to get you at with his rhyme. And he just, the way he delivers it, you just know he was focused, man. It, 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 like, like, and you could tell he practiced his craft, oh, too, absolutely. because, like, the nigga was, mm-hmm. nigga was a, a big, yeah, like, big a heavy, dude. heavy dude. Yeah. And for him to have breath control, yeah, there to get yeah, his verse yeah. off, like. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of probably why his delivery was slow, because, you know, he's a bigger dude and he had asthma and stuff. So he just was like, yo, I ain't going to try to big pun you. 
I'm just going, you know, take my time with it. <laughs> big pun. Yeah, where? You know, Big Pun used to put so many words in a sentence. So he was like, yo, I'm just going to slow it down, but I'm going to bring you on a little ride with my lyrics. And man, he was destroyed. Yo, remember, we did the Funk Flex, um, the Funk Flex Freestyles episode. Yes. I, 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 I don't know about everybody else, but I actually said Fred DeGasso was my top five of the Funk Flex at the time. You sure? I, I guarantee. I'm pretty sure. I, I, I thought, I, I thought if, that if, came if, out if afterwards. Not, if I'm not yeah. mistaken, no, it was before because we mentioned it. If, if I'm not mistaken, mine, I don't know the exact order, but it was, I know it was Black Thought, uh, it was Black Thought, uh, Royce to 5'9, this is mine. Royce to 5'9, uh, my son probably. Uh, Fred the Godson and somebody else. I don't know. I mean, I think it's it was, hard to sure not to put him up there. Five. I think you had one of Meeks in there too. Oh, you know what? I think it was Meek. I think Meek was my fifth one. That Meek one when he had the chain hanging and all that. Yeah. I think he killed that. I think that might have been my top five. Yeah, but yeah, I said it was my top five. He was one of my he was one of he was one of my runner ups, it, man. He was one of my runner ups due to the the caliber of um, ones I had in there because I had Black Thought, then I had um, Loaded Lux. Then I had the uh, one, the the one meek joint. Then I had my son. That's, that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I'd like to see it. I don't even remember what the fuck mine was for sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I had for the gossip because I remember I loved this joint. Um, but he was he was special, man. Yeah, he was he was real special. Why did Fred the Godson have the love and respect from like a lot of the top people in the hip hop game, but he never got like a major deal though? Because I, because of his talent, nah, for real, for real, like, I think I don't I don't like as far as punchline. He one of them dudes that really that probably don't really sell. Like like he he's one of them rappers rappers where he gonna get like I don't know about like we heard the songs, but would it sell like for a label to go ahead and grab him? Like I think he was better off doing what he was doing. I think it was political, but I also think he was a victim of I think he was a victim of the time because oh. right when he came out is the time where. It kind of moved away from New York hip hop. Yeah, like 2010 is when everybody else started popping from everywhere else, and I think he was actually just a victim of the time. If he could have came out at a different time, he'd have got different support. But nobody is really name a New York artist that really got in 2010 that really got a machine behind them like that. Yeah, but I, I think that's period. Like like besides like either Jim Jones and them on Rock Nation now. Jim Jones, Fad, like them niggas ain't really on signing majors no more. Like. Yeah, but when he came, I know I agree with that one hundred percent. But at the time that he came out, it wasn't no Griselda movements. People just doing everything independent. They still was looking for a label situation in two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. Like I, I can't even tell you who popped off in two thousand ten. Besides, well, shit, Meek. Look, I mean that's what I'm saying. Meek was Meek, Meek was in his double XL class. Look, Kendrick, Meek, Big Crit, uh, all them niggas yeah, signed. Yeah, all them signed. But they all from different places, though. Right. They ain't from New York. I think he was kind of a vi- I think it was political. I think he was a victim of his time. Because why were all the dudes respect him? Fat Joe loves Fred the well, guy. Yeah, yeah. Everybody respects him. Why didn't like, you sign him? Meek, Meek 2010, but uh, we heard about Meek, what, 05? Yeah. Like, we heard about Meek while years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm yeah, just saying, like, know, you we, hear about We Meek, in the region. Like, I'm talking about what either Georgia had days. So, like, like it, it took a lot for them niggas to pop off. So, yeah. I don't know when he actually got started. Well, he was, he was rapping. In, I mean, we I didn't hear about him, but he was rapping in the two thousands. That's what they say. But I guess if you locally from New York, you didn't know. Um, but I, I don't but know. I I just think that just his overall persona as a person, like when people seen him, you know what I'm saying? Like you could tell when we was backstage, like them dudes that 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 was it that was running across him. They was showing him love. You know what I'm saying? Or maybe we don't know. Maybe he was offered a, a deal that he felt like was bad, it wasn't, it wasn't and he was good. like, you know yeah. what, I'd rather just be independent than mess with a, mess with a bad yeah. deal son, kind of situation. Because I love seeing him like collaborating with 38 Special a lot lately yeah. and, and doing stuff with Trust. And then also the love that Griselda and them was showing him, even being at the Benny Benny, Benny, Benny bringing Benny him, out, him out. Benny him out. So I, I feel like old and new respect and the him. Crowd, and the crowd went crazy when yeah. they seen him came out. I but, feel like old and new respect when, to Freddie Godson. When the crowd, when, he, when Benny brought him out, the crowd was was like, it was crazy. Yeah. I'm, quite, I'm quite sure to have Fred in the feature is like a good and a bad thing. Like, yeah, you get in a dope verse, but then you gotta either go before or after that verse. Like <laughs> I don't like, care. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. Even if you nice, if you got Fred the Godson on the song, you, you got you like you it, like. I, I gotta bring that's it. That's why on he this went. One. That's why he went last on that on that on that on that latest Jim Jones joint. 
Yeah, you got to bring it, man. Yeah, he went last. The boy said, yeah, I used to scrape the plate, mm-hmm. Brillo. I had the head swinging back and forth. Willow, <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was on that uh, that that I love you joint. Yeah, he killed. That he said, shit. "If your girl come, don't worry about what kind of car she dash in." Yeah, 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 He did that on air for, for real. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He um he uh. It was, so would y'all say he was slept on? Yeah, Fred was slept Absolutely. on yeah. overall by hip hop, but by mainstream, by mainstream, and in uh, in other regions. If you know, you know, yeah. East Coast knowing. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 mean, I think he was slept on. I feel like, I feel like for as good as he was lyrically, as great yeah. as great as he was lyrically, I feel like people didn't appreciate his wordplay. I said this on his podcast several occasions. Like he's something special with the wordplay. Like yeah. the way he the thing the way he maneuvers his rhymes and words is mm. truly special, man. That, that dude that, truly bro. special. That dude right there was a problem, man. Um, he definitely was slept on. I don't think people. I think people put him in a box almost as like a lyricist and, and he can't make songs. And I disagree with that. I think he proved on Gordo that he can like make songs yeah. if needed to be. Yeah. So I, 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 if, you, if you did sleep on him, you shouldn't have for real. Go back and listen to Gordo. Absolutely. Where do you feel Fred the Godson was at at this point of his um, career that he passed? He, he, was still, he was still coming. I'll be coming. Like he wasn't, Paul, he wasn't like the, uh, he, he definitely wasn't an A-lister. Like he wasn't there yet, but at the same time, like if if a a, a, a lyricist came around, like you respect his pen game. Absolutely, oh, you yeah, know you yeah, couldn't yeah, come absolutely. on there bullshitting or you just you get the motherfucker the mic. You know he gonna he gonna put some shit on you. Like man, I think he was slowly coming up on like a almost like a a second shot. Maybe not like on a big major scale, yeah. but I feel like between the old and the new, him kind of. Kind of down with uh, thirty eight special, and then with the Griselda, Benny, and them respected. I feel all, like they, I feel like he was getting back, and he was, all the connections, and he started putting out. Remember, he he kind of slowed down. Then he just started putting out all these projects. Reason I feel like he was getting a second wind almost to where he was like, "Great, like, oh, I'm about to be back. Like, I'm about to really turn it up a notch." Where wow. maybe he could do an independent thing. I don't think he was going to be like but, no super big commercial dude. He, he was but, chasing his check. You heard what he said on the payback. Why would I rap for free? I get paid to rap. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He said. He said. <laughs> that's what Jay said. He said something like, um, I don't know if that's just an interlude or what. But on no, there, it was an interlude. Yeah, he said, um, basically, like you know, I gave y'all bars for free for yeah. years. Like yeah, now, now you got to pay. Now you got to pay back. I need all that back now. I gave y'all a lot of special bars over the year. I need that money all back. <laughs> so that that was dope, man. Man, this dude was special. He was one of the special ones, man. For real. Um, what message? Should Fred the Godson's pass and say to hip hop? I mean, it, it shit ain't promised, man. Like, like you gotta, you gotta respect the niggas and, like you said, like like Nori and all the mother cats said, get them flu- get them their flowers while they here, man. Don't wait till they gone, till yeah. they gone to say, yo, man, damn, dude, I wish I got to tell dude, he was like one of my favorites or he was nice, man. But yeah, yeah. And, and 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 also and also no disrespect to like, um, however his his health or. It ain't conditions, but just trying to be more healthier and get in shape. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that <clears throat> I think that his weight and all that played a, a difference in everything. You know what I'm saying? That definitely Which it shouldn't. his weight. But, go ahead, go ahead, my bad. But I just, I, you know, it just, I just, you know, when you look at respiratory issues and big guys like him and myself, you got to watch things like that. So that's key, like for us to get in shape. You know what I'm saying? I mean, his his health, like him losing weight, would have been. You know, it definitely wouldn't have hurt it. It'd been a good thing. Yeah. But he he was born with asthma. Like the asthma yeah. thing. Is like it is what it is with that. Like you could yeah. be, you could be the You'd most fittest motherfucking if, yeah. you, if, 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 if your lungs ain't right. Up. Yeah. Like. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the I feel like um, the asthma thing is something he can't do nothing about. Yeah. Um, he I mean definitely was a big dude, man. That Gordo comes with yeah. man, it's, big, it's big, fat. Big, yeah. Like, so Gordo. he was a big dude. Um, what it says, what does it say? The hip hop is just like yo, like. Health is wealth, man. I mean, this, this ain't the first time. I think we can go all the way back to Big Pun when um yep. heard about this. Like, yo, this stuff. Fat Joe, and, Fat and, Joe, and then remember Fat, Fat Joe, Joe just like started yo, losing man. all that weight. Because well, Pun of, did too. He lost a hundred pounds, and it still wasn't enough. Yeah, but that's mm-hmm. he was a big boy, man. He was a very big boy. So I, Pun was like this, like he was rocking. Word. Now, Big Pun <laughs> couldn't even. But at the time that he passed, Big Pun couldn't even stand up no more. Yeah. He, was, he was rapping like sitting down on, at shows. Imagine yeah. going to a show and somebody sitting down rapping. 
I pay to see that right now, man. Putting at a show. Right and his his crew, day. his crew was moving. He sitting down. I seen yeah. him at a show, but he wasn't rapping. He was just sitting. No, I, I, I seen him at the at Powerhouse, man. The nigga did the little Italy. He had to stop it <laughs> and then finish the shit. But that motherfucker was standing. He was killing that's where that Cuba, shit. Though. That's where Cuban Link came in to play in the recording process. Because they said Cuban Link was um, finishing his, like a lot of his stuff. Dang, it sounds nothing like him, though. Well, that's weird. He, hold on. You saying Cuban Link was. They said Cuban Link was finishing, like, well, you I know guess, I, like. You know I do a voice like Big Pun? I don't maybe, know. Maybe, maybe on stage. Maybe some, on stage. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, okay, I, I, okay, I, I okay, might okay, have it. I okay, might have okay, it. Yeah, yeah, maybe on stage. I might have it. Well, yeah, I'm sure he was his hype man, so I can see that part. Yeah. Uh, will his passing make hip hop take COVID 19 more seriously? Nah, no. Man. Damn. You see what's going on? Good, that's Atlanta. <laughs> and Atlanta. that's everywhere. It's Philly. No, it's just, it's you just should, in you Philly. It's Georgia. It was just. It was just in Philly. You seen him in Philly? Well, they was outside. They, yeah, they was, was back. Nice day, they was know? in them little three car joints. Them three car, um, them them three the three wheel motorcycles and the three wheel little car joints. I think it should though. Like I it's, think it, it should. I make, hope it, it do. It I hope make people take it seriously. I hope it do. Because I mean, especially if you got preconditions, like like that. That's a serious thing, man. This yeah. brother lost his life. He went from. He, he, it's like a couple of days before that he's putting up freestyles. Yeah, this brother going now. Like shit, man. Damn, this is messed up. This should make you take it serious. Now, what did you expect from Fred the Godson coming forward in the future? What did you expect? Um, another album. I expected a whole project with Heat Makers. Another one because he yeah, did. Yeah, he did. I, I, I expected I, another. I was hoping for the. Of course, the, my. Dream song would have been him kissing Fab like on a song together. Mm-hmm. That that could have happened. Yeah, that um, happened. yeah, it probably would have happened. Jada time. Kiss messed with uh, Fred the God for a long time. Heavy. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Only, only him and together. Fab been together, right? Who? Fred. I thought I thought Jada Kiss broke him in my eyes. I'm no, not, but they, he did do a song with Fab. He yeah, did a song. Yeah, he, I just said uh, Jada Kiss broke him. Yeah. Like put him out. I think he was. On, I think he was on one of Fab's mixtapes. I may be wrong, but I feel like he was on one of his mixtapes, on one of his old. They never been together. Maybe no. there's, the three may, of them. maybe there's a competition. Mm-hmm. One of them, one of them joints. He might have been on there. <laughs> the three of them together. Yeah, I, yeah. To me, with, with Jay on the end. I agree. I agree with Tez. I kind of feel like Jadakiss almost. It feels like to me like he put him out almost. But I know he rock. He rock with um, Fred the Godson heavy. Um, that's what I'm saying. Like Fat Joe. Like a lot of dudes like mess with him, man. Um, Ray Kwan, yeah. Buster Rhymes. Like they mess with Fred the Goss and they respected his, his pen game. I saw an interview where he talked about um like he been giving he been giving people a lot of bars over the years, but he ain't really share his story. So when his music come in the future, he was gonna share his story more. So I was looking forward to hearing that. He said he got a lot, you know, a lot of stuff that he don't really talk about coming from his up upbringing and his family, that he was gonna get into his music more. So I would have liked to like to see that. But um Man, I, I know he was down with 38 Special. I'm yeah. sure it would have been more of that to come. Yep. Um, yep. More Heat Maker. He never released an re- official album, so oh, I'd like to hear that. Um, him and Heat Makers was very close. I'm pretty sure Heat Makers got some stuff yeah, in it. I, I, they was working on Gorilla Glue too. I don't know if they actually finished it yet, but they may have finished it. I heard that they were working on it, so they I don't know if they finished it or not, though. But Joel Ortiz, just seeing his stuff, um, he was very – Impacted by the whole passing, man. A lot of people was. A lot of people in hip hop shook mm-hmm. hip hop up. Yes, like this is a brother that he may not have been the most commercial, like successful, but it was a big loss he, for the hip hop. He was well for respected. Sure. Yeah, well respected, man. Um, what does Fred the Godson mean to the BX in, in New York City hip hop? He means something. He's 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 probably one of the top spitters from BX. Man, he like he's like the people's champ to me. He's like he's like the guy that he ain't get the, the 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 critical acclaim and the platinum records, but the people love him. The people Ooh. love Fred the Godson. Like the streets love him. The Bes- bar, the besides bar. besides the giving studs in the in the BX <laughs> as far as lyrics, do you do you have Fred the Godson in, in, in one of in your tops besides the giving studs? I, like don't ma- don't mention KRS and them type dudes. I tell you this. I tell you this. Fred the Godson lyrically, um, I mean, we got a concert crew hall of fame, so a lot of those New York guys, those would be my top guys. Mm-hmm. But lyrically, 
after that, he can hold his own with anybody. He can hold. A matter of fact, I'll take this back. He can hold his own with the greats. He uh, ain't, yeah. he ain't, he ain't going to get crushed to where you like yeah. Fred the Godson can hold. He can hold his own to where you're going to respect him. I, that I, His word plays like that. I would like to see Fred like rap on – like rap on an actual song, like where you be like, any on a mixtape song, like like it's an album song, like damn this shit, like a, like you're a nobody to somebody kill you type joint, mm-hmm. like like where he has substance in it. You be like damn, but but I think he could hold his own way. Well, to me, to me, I felt like Gordo was like that. I feel like Gordo because it was all original production. I, it wasn't like he was just rapping over old beats. I feel like. That's why I, he really got my attention because I'm like, oh, he can really make songs that's, now. Like he ain't really just no freestyle rapper. Like yeah. yo, he really got and I not and it was like twenty something songs on there. And I swear I liked almost all of them. I gave it a four and a half headphones. Like I was feeling that joint. I was feeling it for real. So um, I, I feel like man, I feel like he was very important to to the BX and NYC hip hop. That's why you hear the Fat Joes, the Buster Rhymes, all those legends in the game. Not Nas posted Fred the God's son. Like they respected this man. Like you, like most people. I know some people that follow all them dudes. Is like who's Fred the God's son? And, and for Nas to give it up to him, um, even Havoc gave it up to him. Buster Rhymes, Fat Joe. These is legendary dudes in the game. Take a time out to acknowledge Fred the God's son, man. Yeah. And then you got the younger dudes, Benny, Fred the God's son. Mm. They all like, yo, man, Fred the God's son was nice. So that's crazy, and, and and remember, Westside Gun just got over um, coronavirus too. Yeah, who did? Westside Gun. Yeah, he was talking about Fred I never, too. I never knew yet. He was talking yeah, about he, Fred he, too. He announced it afterwards after he got older. He was like, it was yeah. bad, but then he but he he put up something about Fred the God son. Like, damn, yeah, he announced it after he was done with it. Wow. He was like, man, this, this shit, this joint was real. Hey, we, I miss them fucking punchlines, and metaphors, man. Yeah, that's, I agree. It is one of it is one of a kind. Pops man. Was burning. That was nothing new. Then it was just Kyrie Irving, just guns my uncle drew. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, 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 well, we we had the bar any like any other bars. We gave a lot of bars the whole episode. Yeah. Any, any other friend? I like the one that um, freaks you said it, but um, he said uh, you should call your girl Kim uh, yeah. because every car oh, dash yeah, she in. in. Yeah. <laughs> that was on that um, Jada joint. <laughs> yeah, that was that was tough. Then um, that was on Full Flex. Then he said he did that on that first was on I Love You for sure. No, well, you know what? Nah, he, no, 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 no. You know what? No, he he actually that's what makes his. I got a whole different point of view of his um, Funk Master Flex freestyle because he was taking bits of old lyrics of his and putting it in that Funk Flex one because that line um two guns named Kelly and B yeah. so there won't be a Michelle, a, a Michelle. Yeah. that was on in 2010 he had a song um, yeah, a feature yeah somebody it, else. yeah no it was on his it was on his mixtape it so was on he, it was on I so what he repeated that I think it was on CNN yeah. he he said it in a song first and he said that all the way in, yeah. in 2019 on right. the phone flex as soon as we get off the joint I'm gonna play that I love you joint that that came right before the the uh, whip your hair back that, that Brillo joint that for sure yeah and then um in in 2017 uh. Uh, cool G Rap had this album called like The Return to Don, and um, Fred the Godson had a a, a feature on there, and um, he said uh, I, it probably won't even unless you hear it live, you probably can't get the same. But he said I took a gram or two and made a grand or two, sold to your mother and your grandma too. Mm. Oh, they a lover of my grandma too, but who better than Cool G Rap? I'm in the booth with a Biggie sweater. This Cool G Rap, <laughs> <laughs> Uzi clap. You've been warned. Put the snug to it. Uniform. Don't make me clink the nose like a unicorn. Get it? You've been on for a couple. Don't diss the forefathers. Your mom don't know your pops. You probably got forefathers. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man. Then he also said, I'm like Pippin in Salt Lake City. I carry the mic sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember that one. <laughs> Yo, man, dude got bars, man. This heavy, heavy bars, man. Wow, rest in peace, uh, Fred the Godson, man. Uh, he said, he said, what did he say? Uh, they know you getting your cream, so I'm gonna come blast you. I told them all green jackets like you won the Masters. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. the problem, man. Yo, Fred the Godson gonna be missed. 
Yes. Condolences to his wife, um, family, the kids, his daughters, all his family Ooh, and his yeah, loved man. ones. This is truly a big, a big loss for hip hop, man. And you know, sometimes we, you might, we, uh, you might feel like um, the people that's only big names get dedications and stuff. But like, no, this brother was special, man. And and one thing I can say about the Concert Crew podcast for sure is that we gave him his flowers while he was here, mm-hmm. for sure. So we just wanted to continue to honor him, but we actually gave That was him. the reason why I said that, because you know everybody, you know, they follow us and they do it. Oh, man, they just try to jump on anything they probably get. Nah, this is people that we've been talked about. We got stats. We got DMs. Man, we just don't show that type stuff. I ain't solidifying, dog, for motherfuckers. Fuck them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah, we've yeah. been rocking Fred Agassi. And Fred Agassi was nice. And if you don't know about Fred Agassi, his all this stuff's on streaming, man. Go go check it out, and then you'll you'll see what we talking about, man. This brother got bars. Like you may not have heard none of his stuff, but I'm telling you, the man got bars, man. Our he's, black, he's, our black Watson, you make your nerves shake. Yeah, I talk to the Smith like I'm on first take. <laughs> ESPN, I make. He said your girl squirt in the Lex. She in the ESPN. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> wow, yo, dude was special, man. Rest in peace. Uh, once again, the Fred the Godson. Yes. I was 35 years old. Wow, man. It's Gordo, man. Gordo. Gordo, man. Frederico. Woo, boy. This boy got legendary bars, man. I tell you, man. Mm-hmm. Game, man. Game going to miss him, man. Game going to miss him. His bars. I ho- Hopefully he got some more stuff. Rec- or I don't know how he was recording, if he just had a lot of stuff stashed. But I don't know if they finished that Um. of uh, – that gorilla uh, the Gorilla Glue 2 yet, but man, boy, it was a problem, man. Never even got a chance to put out an official album, neither. All this music so, and no official album. God Level was a mixtape. All that was considered mixtape. Yep. And the reason why I think it's mixtapes is because I don't think I don't think you um, got to worry about getting the samples clear when, um, right. when it's a mixtape. So if you don't got the backing for somebody to pay for all those samples, you just call it a mixtape. But the only difference is now you can put it on social media for, I mean, not social media, on streaming sites yeah. for whatever reason. I don't know, man. But, oh, man, rest, once again, rest in peace to uh, Fred. Fred the Gordo. Godson, man. We going to miss you. Gordo. Yo, man, yo, man, you never know, man. So you got to appreciate man. life. You got to appreciate life. And this brother was something special. Yes, he was. So we going to miss you, man. Salute. Everybody from the Concert Crew Podcast, we want to say rest in peace to Fred the Godson. To the family. Condolences. Y'all, condolences to the family. Yo. Y'all go check him out. Um, the Concert Crew Podcast. Make sure y'all go follow us at Concert Crew Podcast. We everywhere. Make sure y'all go subscribe, download. We on all digital platforms. Make sure y'all go subscribe to our new YouTube channel. Yes. Um, we here, man. We not going nowhere. Yo, Pito, hit me with the fader. Gordo. Gordo. Gordo.